Okay, y'all, I'm gonna start by saying this is going to be my worst, most disgusting video I have ever put on my channel. I am not filming this from my camera. I am filming this from my phone. There's gonna be like no edits, no nothing, because I'm uploading it right from my phone without editing it whatsoever. So this will not be like any other video. I promise all my other videos will be so much better. I just wanted to upload this because I have been getting a total whirlwind of questions and asking for advice and I know I upload advice weekly that is what I let all of you guys know I am always weekly going to be posting tips and advice on how to start acting and what might help you with your acting career um, ignore this light that's going on I'm literally in my car as you can tell but so I want to say thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers. I am already at 1.3 thousand when making this video and I'm almost at 25,000 on my TikTok. So I wanted to say thank you guys so much. It is amazing and makes me so happy. It is very overwhelming because I get a lot of comments for advice and tips and questions daily, constantly. So I want to make sure I am answering all of those for you guys in a timely manner. So thank you guys so much for being here. And I will start with just the general advice. Um, please go watch my other videos for general advice on how to start and everything. A lot of people wanted uh, me to ask, uh, to kind of explain the union. So let's start off with the union. The union SAG, SAG-AFTRA, is the union for acting. Um, like I said, I'm not a teacher, so I don't know everything. This is just from my own personal experience. Me personally, I am SAG-E, which is SAG eligible. Um, so I'm not part of the union just yet. I need one more, um, basically credit. Like I am part of the union, but, oh my God, there's a car. <laughs> I am part of the union, but, um, I'm not SAG. I'm SAG eligible right now. So I'm not non-union anymore. It's kind of, it's very confusing. I'm not non-union. I'm eligible for the union. I am just, um, not officially SAG um, just yet, but I am SAG eligible, so I'm very excited about that. Um, maybe if I put on... <laughs> no, that looks so goofy. Okay, um, but, so yeah, so I'm SAG eligible. So how the union works, basically, you need SAG credits to become a SAG actor. You need to work on projects that are affiliated with the union in order to become a SAG actor. Um, all actors start off as non-union actors. Probably the first few years, I would assume. I mean, it's different for everyone, but the first few years of acting, you'll probably be non-union until you get enough credits to become a SAG actor. Once you are a SAG actor, you can only work on SAG projects. You can no longer work on non-union projects. So non-union is usually the less, playing, the less paying jobs. The SAG union is usually, or the union is usually more high paying jobs um the union is usually more the legit tv shows the legit commercials the legit big like blockbuster movies so once you become sag you can not work on non-union projects anymore where i am i can work on both non-union and union um projects so i'm like right in the middle which is good um because once you become sag sometimes sag um, actors have a harder time getting work just because there's more non-union projects out there than there are union. Um, but, you know, so it, it usually, once you get into SAG or are eligible um, to become part of SAG and you have all your credits in, you have to pay a fine that I think is about like two, three thousand $3,000 to become part of the union. But don't worry about that yet, you guys. You need to start off um, with your independent projects and get your training in. You can focus on becoming part of the union once that gets there, but you still have a little bit of time to go if you're just starting off. Uh, but I'll to, to all my actors who all are part of the union out there, congrats. It's an awesome place to be. I'm excited to be SAG eligible. And yeah, it'll be a good part of the journey. Um, the next part I want to talk about, I know no edits in here, guys. Sorry, this is all real and raw. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is resumes. I'm going to make a separate video just on resumes. But guys, starting off, a lot of people are asking me, well, what do I put on my resume if I have no credits? And I totally understand that. If you're just starting off and you need a resume and you're like, but I have no, I've never worked on anything, what do I put on? So this is what you're going to put on. You're going to put on your name. You're going to put on your contact information. If you do not have an agent yet, you obviously are not going to put on your agent information. You will put on your information. So your phone number and your, your email, I would say, is good. So it just gives casting directors a way to call you. You will put on your hair color 
Um, and I have heard different things, you know, every, every, every industry is different. Every market is different. Um, what I've been told, I've been told to put your hair color, your height and your eye color, I believe. Um, I've heard sometimes kids should put their weight, but once you get to a certain age, I'm pretty sure you don't have to put your weight. I've heard mixed reviews, but I've just been told to put my height, my hair color, my eye color, just to kind of give a gist of your appearance. Um, you can, some people also put like their shoe size. I don't know if that's always needed. It's, you know, helpful, but, um, and then you're going to want to put any, anything you've ever done, like even like little things, um, even just like plays. If you've ever done like a play in your school when you were 10 or you did, you know, uh, just little things like that. If you've ever done a play or any theater, even if it's community theater or in your church or in your school, put that. It just shows you have some sort of some sort of little acting knowledge or ability um, that you have done before. So do that. Um, put any training. Make sure to get your classes in there, guys. Training is important. Like I always say in my videos, training is the most important first step, okay? So if you've done any classes or you have any coaches or any of that, put that first and foremost on your resume. If not, if you're literally starting from zip zero nothing, um, add interesting things about you guys. There's always like a section on your resume for just like uh, other additional um, abilities, you know, just fun facts. You know, if you're a horseback rider, if you're really good at cooking, if you can speak in a British accent, if you're really good at swimming, if you've won competitions for like anything, any sport you guys have ever done, any artistic thing, if you're a good painter, anything, just something that is interesting about you that you're good in outside of acting, put that on there. Because if a casting director is making a movie about a girl that skateboards and she sees, oh, okay, well, this person um, has never really done a movie before, um, but she's won two awards for skateboarding, dang, I might want to take a look at her. You know, like it's just stuff like that. So that's what you can put on your resume. As far as headshots go, I know I've covered this before, but headshots guys are so important. Just the gist of it is just that they look like you. Nothing else really matters unless it looks like you. Um, actor headshots are not glamour headshots. Do not focus on looking good. Do not focus on makeup. Do not focus on jewelry. Do not focus on looking like the hottest model alive because that's not that's not what it's for. Your headshots, A, want to look like you. That is the most important thing. So you walk into an audition, you walk into a casting, and you're giving the producers or the casting directors a headshot that looks like you, okay? Um, that's the most important thing. The other important thing is that it shows emotion. Um, you don't want a headshot that looks like a mugshot that you're just standing there like, you want to show emotion. So a commercial headshot is big, bright smiles, selling a product. You're just so happy. Like a, a, break, a big eye catching smile, bright smile. You want to be happy for commercial. For theatrical, you want that, um, that mysterious, you know, that smirk, that eyebrow raise, that you know, kind of that you can read inside the, the eyes. Okay. So that's what you want. Um, I would not advise you to take headshots on, you know, a 2010 phone, like iPod touch or something, but they also, your first headshots do not have to be high quality, amazing $800, you know, award-winning photographer either. Um, as long as you make them look legit, professional, they look like you, and you're conveying a lot of emotion in them, then they're going to work for, for your first headshots anyways. Um, someone also asked me to describe how to get started working as a minor. I started off when I was 13. I remember having to go through my school and get like a work permit because I wasn't physically, like legally able to be working unless I had a work permit. But guys, I can't really speak too much on that because I don't want to give you wrong legal information. I don't know too much about that. Definitely, it, I know it depends a lot on, you know, where you live. Um, your rules for working as a minor might be different than where it was for me. So I'm not sure. I don't want to give you the wrong information on that. So just do your research, you guys. Like I always say, that is so important. Um, um, what else can we talk about? Um, 
But yeah, people always say, that I'm getting a lot of DMs of like, okay, I've never acted before, but I want to be in a Netflix show. How do I start? You guys need to know that timing is everything in this, in this industry. You guys are not going to, and I'm sorry, I always say follow your dreams and be optimistic, but you also have to um, realize that you're not going to be um, on a Netflix blockbuster original series um, within the first week of starting acting. You know what I mean? You want to be realistic. Um, so like I say, this is always what I'm going to start to say. Always, I will always say start off with training and theater, okay? If theater is not something that is available in your area, don't sweat it as much as training. Training is the most important. But theater is so important, you guys. Plays really will tell you if acting is your passion. Um, it will help you memorize lines. It will help you get used to performing. Um, theater, you always want to start with theater because theater is acting. Um, you know, theater is the gist of acting. Theater is what acting really is. So that you want to start with there. You don't have to do theater for your whole life. I don't do theater anymore, but it's just, you really want to get your feet wet in theater. If that's absolutely for whatever reason, not an option for you, go right into training. Look up, say you're from, I don't freaking know, Maryland. I don't know. Just look up your city, like the nearest biggest city near you and type in acting classes or acting coaches or acting school. Something will come up, you guys, unless you live in the middle of absolute Timbuktu nowhere. Um, stuff is bound to come up. Do your homework. Like I always say, that is the most important thing. Um, what else? What else? Hmm. I'm also seeing a lot of people saying tips on how to memorize lines. And I think I've covered this a little bit before. What helped me and what still helps me now is making sure that there's one piece of information, one piece of advice that I learned that I was like, wow, you don't want to memorize and practice the lines so much that you're no longer like feeling the lines. You're just performing them. Performing and feeling and being the character are different. So make sure you're memorized. You know, you don't want to forget your lines. However, you don't want to be a robot that is only saying the lines like this and just trying your hardest to remember the line. You know, like you don't want to be like that. You want to still be able to feel them. So learn them at a way that they are in your brain. However, they're not drilled so hard that you're only memorizing and not actually living the character. You know what I mean? You want to feel the character and then learn the lines, not learn the lines and then feel the character, if that makes sense. I always do one line at a time. Make sure that line is understood. Make sure I know the motivation of the character. Make sure I know why the character is saying that line. Make sure I have the natural ability in my brain to feel the line. Once that is covered, I memorize it, make sure I have all of it, and then I move on to the next one, understand it, realize it, you know, you have to take it literally line by line, because if you're just memorizing and saying lines without knowing why your character is saying them, it's going to come off unnatural. You have to make sure you know exactly why your character is doing what they're doing. That is the motivation of the character that will, that's, you know, acting is so much more than just memorizing lines and saying them in a cool way. Like, that's not what it is. You are becoming the character. You are the character. You are now living as this character. The character is you. You need to realize and do the math in your head and find out why the character is doing what the character's doing. Because it's no longer a person on paper. It is now you and you have to bring this person to life. So it's really important that you're not just memorizing lines and thinking of them and trying to remember, remember them on the day of filming and then showing up and looking at your partner and just saying it. It's You have to step into that life and realize and figure out what is going on, why it's going on. Um, wow, this is giving me flashbacks of doing my old vlogs in my car. Oh, wow, okay. Um, I'm just gonna end it here, you guys. I hope that was enough information. Don't worry, I'm gonna I'm gonna upload more this week. Um, I'm literally in my car this weekend is so freaking busy. Um, so that's why this video was so quick. But I hope it answered some questions. I know I have a lot of new subscribers. So if you guys watch this video, hopefully it'll give you some sort of advice. And I will see you in a couple days. I love you guys. Bye.